what is the most likely interpretation of this EKG rhythm, of this EKG strip? So do you think this is sinus tachycardia? Is it atrial fibrillation? Is it supraventricular tachycardia or normal sinus rhythm? So remember, in day one, I shared with you an interesting strategy that you could use day one, day two. We talked about this. The five steps of uh, interpretation of an EKG strip. So basically, you need to determine if it's regular. You need to determine the heart rate. You need to look at the PR interval and identify if it's normal or not. You need to look at the QRS complex and you need to look for the relationship between the P wave and the QRS complex. Okay, let's go through step number one. Is this a regular rhythm? So in order to identify the regular rhythm, I'm going to use my handy dandy pen here. We have to measure the distance between the R to R interval. And we got to count. See, we have one full box here, two full box, three, four full box, and almost two liter squares. So let's check from here to here. We have one, two, three, full box, a little bit on the left side and a little bit on the right side. Well, that looks about the same. From here to here, we have four box and one small square. So as you can see, in every R to R interval, there is the same distance, which indicates that this is a regular rhythm. Now, let's identify what is the heart rate in this strip where we're facing a regular rhythm. Well, I showed you two methods that you could use. Let's use the simple method which is method number one, which is identifying the QRSs, the complex, in the strip and multiply it by 10. But first, we need to identify that this is a six second strip. And as I showed you, you have to count the big squares and you need to have 30 big squares. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30 big squares. We have a six second strip. So I can count the QRSs. There's one here, two, three, four, five, six, and seven times 10, 70. So we have a regular rhythm and the heart rate is 70 beats per minute, approximately. Okay, let's look at the PR interval. We measure the PR interval from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the R, the QRS complex. And it should be between 0 0.12 seconds and 0 0.20 seconds, which that's what we have. It looks like the PR interval is normal and is constant throughout the strip. Perfect. The QRS complex, which is the space, the QRS interval, I apologize, which is the space between the Q and the S, it needs to be approximately less than 0 0.10 seconds, which it is. So we have a normal QRS interval. And then we have 
a P for every QRS. So we have a P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS. We have a P for every QRS. So if the rhythm is regular, if the heart rate is normal, if the PR interval is normal, if the QRS interval is normal, and there's a P for every QRS and it's constant, we are in the presence of normal sinus rhythm. <laughs>